After Halloween 3 was a gigantic flop at the box office, as well as being a critical failure, Mustafa Akkad wanted to bring Myers back, as that was what the fans demanded after seeing the third film without Myers in it. John Carpenter was approached by Canon Films to write and direct a fourth Halloween movie with Michael Myers in it. So he teamed up with the writer of the novelizations of Halloween 2 and Halloween 3, Dennis Edickson, to write a script for Halloween 4. I am happy to state that I've read it, and it's an interesting read. The script starts off with the shape, dressing in front of a mirror. It cuts to the night of Halloween 1978 with Lindsay Wallace's parents, and them coming home to find police in their front lawn. Mrs. Wallace tries to find Lindsay, but can't. She goes into her house, which is now almost like a living organism, and she sees Michael Myers, the shape, burst out of Lindsay's skin and starts to come towards her, while the house starts to bleed. She starts to scream and wakes up, revealing it was all a dream. It's been 10 years since that infamous night, and it's revealed that Mrs. Wallace has been suffering from nightmares. Lindsay doesn't remember anything that happened that night, but Tommy does. Because of this, Mrs. Wallace forbids them from talking to each other, despite Tommy's best efforts. Detective Hunt wakes up to Sheriff Lee Brackett calling him and saying he needs him at the station. It cuts to the precinct where Brackett is telling a group of protesting mothers that Halloween will still never happen in Haddonfield again, even though they think something strange is going on. We cut back to Lindsay who is being driven to school by her mother, despite her protests. They talk about Tommy and how she doesn't want Lindsay to see him because of how he's still seeing a psychiatrist and remembers that night. Lindsay reassures her that she remembers nothing of that night and that she needs to let her live her own life. At around this time, a couple named Leah and Sean have a fight in front of the Myers house. There is also a small tease of the shape. We cut to the school where Lindsay is getting out and a small group of girls comment on her and her relationship with her mother. There is another tease of the shape as well who is seen by Mrs. Wallace before he disappears. Mrs. Wallace heads to the TV station to confront news reporter Robert Mundy because of various Halloween ads that are encouraging the Halloween spirit. The bigwigs at the station talk about it and what to do about the ads, as well as trying to get a story about the Halloween holiday and that sort of thing. Nothing terribly interesting, but Laurie Strode is name dropped. It cuts back to Lindsay where she heads to a classroom to talk with Tommy Doyle. He states how fear is controlling the town of Haddonfield and they won't let the boogeyman die. Lindsay has a flashback to the original Halloween during the scene. They have a tender moment together, but the bell rings before Tommy can get through to her and she leaves. It cuts to Hunt working a case about a stolen meat at a grocery shop as well as graffiti on the wall which says Halloween is back and how this has been a regular occurrence for a couple of weeks. We cut back to Robert Mundy at Smith's Grove. We see some footage of Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis, who in this version actually died in the explosion. In this version, it seems as though Dr. Loomis is partly to blame for Myers becoming the man we saw in the original Halloween movies. In the footage, it shows, at first, Loomis trying to reach Michael before he orders the tape to be cut out. It doesn't, and it shows Loomis screaming at Michael at how he's faking all of this, that he won't fool him, how he's evil incarnate, and how he even threatens to hurt Michael. We even see a young Michael do the famous head tilt. Ironically, even before the sixth movie, it's suggested that Loomis thought Michael was the incarnation of an evil cult. The head of the institution, named Dr. Stern, genuinely believes that Michael was innocent and that Loomis infected him with his paranoia and obsession. In another scene in the sanitarium, it shows the various patients worshipping a dummy that looks like Michael, with a sacrifice at its feet calling him the Lord of the Dead. Cut to Mundy and his cameraman at the school trying to get information on Laurie Strode and Tommy Doyle. Mundy gets an interview with Tommy and Tommy flubs it up on purpose and blames adults for not letting it go and keeping the fear alive and states that Michael Myers is dead. We then cut to a bunch of teenage girls decorating the auditorium for a homecoming dance and they pull a prank on Lindsay. We cut to a girl named Darcy outside the city limits getting pumpkins. She is eventually killed off screen by the shape. It soon cuts to a Haddonfield Town meeting discussing the drive-in theater and how the violent horror movies from the drive-in are corrupting the youth. The owner of the drive-in states that the movies don't corrupt youth and the parents are acting ridiculous. Another person, Miss Oldfield, accuses the parents of sheltering their children too much and spreading their fear onto them when they know better than they do. Tommy has been listening in and he walks out in a huff to phone Lindsay. They talk and both have different intentions on what they want to talk about. 
He eventually hangs up on her and notices something in the parking lot. He sees what looks like the shape, but it's just a bunch of boys pulling a prank. Hunt finds them and finds some Halloween contraband, so he takes the boy wearing the mask and Tommy into his squad car for not cooperating. He and Brackett talk about Myers being dead in the car. There's also an instance of a boy's dog coughing up two human fingers after a situation at the Myers house. Cut to the police station with Hunt interrogating the mask boy while Brackett talks with Tommy. Because of Hunt being too violent with Mask Boy, Tommy takes Hunt's gun and runs away from the precinct. The Shape claims two more victims while they're having sex, one of them being Sean from earlier. Cut to Lindsay waiting at the dance for Tommy, which is what they were talking about on the phone, or at least she was. And we see Brackett looking for Tommy at the dance. Miss Oldfield covers for Lindsay while she sneaks out the back. She bumps into Leah and she asks Lindsay for a ride. Cut to the drive-in with teenagers acting like teenagers three of which are Tommy's bullies from the first movie who have been mentioned from time to time throughout the script. Cut to the Wallaces and the Doyles talking with Brackett about how he'll find them and for them not to worry. Hunt thinks Myers is back. Cut back to the drive-in with Lindsay and Leah. Lindsay is nervous and someone is watching her. Leah goes to party with some other friends but she finds them dead and she's grabbed by someone. We then see a flashback of the first movie with Lonnie, one of Tommy's bullies, going up to the Myers house. Turns out it was just a dream. He leaves the car he's in at the drive-in and notices a fog all around him, as well as the fog playing on the screen. Long scene of him walking to the concession stand, then to the bathroom, and then back to the car. He opens up the back of the car and sees all of his friends dead. He starts running around looking for help, opens a car to find Leah dead. He starts opening other cars and seeing their occupants dead. He goes to the projector room and tries to signal someone for help, but it's actually the shape. The shape then kills Lonnie and Lindsay is looking on, horrified, and runs away. Police cars come up to the place and f are formulating how to get in. Lindsay is running away from the shape. She sees more of them as well. Cops come in with their guns ready. Then Robert Mundy and Dr. Stern come out of nowhere. She tries to reason with who th she thinks is Michael, but he kills her. Lindsay tries to run away and Hunt starts shooting the shape, against Brackett's wishes. It does nothing. The shape breaks the shotgun in half and caves in Hunt's face. The shape picks up Lindsay and Tommy shows up with the stolen 44 from earlier. Tommy shoots the shape a few times. Does nothing. Lindsay gets away though and the rest of the police start shooting him when the shape starts growing. 8, 10, 12 feet tall. A stray bullet shoots a car and it blows up, eventually lighting the whole place on fire. The Wallaces and Doyles are worried sick. We then see Tommy and Lindsay walking away from the wreckage and from Haddonfield. They wonder what to do next, as they see the nightmare that the spirit of Michael Myers has caused. Tommy kisses Lindsay and they leave, cut to them sleeping in a barn at dawn. Lindsay awakens and she has a nightmare of the shape, but then she wakes up for real and Tommy comforts her, and the last thing we see is a big pumpkin patch and cut to credits. Yeah, so as I said, it's certainly an interesting read. I don't hate it, but it's certainly a mixed bag. I like the stuff with Tommy and Lindsay, as well as the overall idea that it's more about the aftermath and fear that Myers caused, and the patients at Smith's Grove acting like Myers is a god. But there's also a lot I didn't like, like how all the kills are off screen, none of the characters outside Lindsay and Tommy are really all that likable, the climax is too supernatural, and it feels too bloated. As well as the movie just kind of stopping with a lot of loose ends. Like there's so many different little plot points and little moments that should have been tied up but just aren't. A lot of the subplots could have been cut down or from the script entirely. Like the stuff with Leah and Sean, Lonnie and his friends, and the stuff with Mundy. I didn't mention a lot of it because so much of it was superfluous crap that didn't matter. It has a bunch of really good ideas within the script. Mainly with the more surreal stuff. I don't mind that the shape in this is more of the embodiment of fear rather than just being another flesh and blood killer. But the problem with that is that it could have been seen as a ripoff of A Nightmare on Elm Street. There are great ideas, but it's just bogged down by so much stupidity and generic slasher crap that it just comes off as silly. I feel if Carpenter and Edickson rewrote this a couple times, it could have been something good. But we never got to that stage. Akkad thought it was too cerebral and went with the Halloween 4 we got. Which I honestly don't mind because that was my favorite sequel until Halloween 2018 came out. I'll leave a link to the script below if you do want to check it out. 
Overall, it would have been an interesting movie to see, but maybe it's a good thing that this never became the actual fourth Halloween movie.